Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about specificity of enzyme action. In our previous videos, we have talked about mechanism of enzyme action, and here we'll be talking about specificity of enzyme action. So, what is specificity? So, there are lot many chemical reactions are taking place in our cell, and there are thousands of enzymes working continuously on it. So, then how do they differentiate different chemical reaction? to work on right so here they do have a character that is specificity each enzyme having their specificity that means as we discussed in classification of enzymes like oxidoreductases hydrolases transferases lyases ligases isomerases they work only on particular type of reactions but still there are some specificities which make enzymes unique okay so let us discuss so ability of enzymes that means to discriminate between two substrates so which is or like on which substrate to work on okay they have this characteristic and enzymes are highly specific both in the reaction catalyzed and the choice of substrate so this is also another interesting character of enzymes so that means they are highly specific that means which reaction to be catalyzed okay and the choice of substrate okay specificity makes it possible for number of enzymes to coexist co in cell without interfering each other's actions so as to say like a glycolysis is also taking place in cytoplasm and also like lipid synthesis is also taking place in the cytoplasm right so same way mitochondria krebs cycle and beta oxidation so though there are different metabolic reactions okay so no other enzyme will interfere with others business okay so the enzymes which are involved in beta oxidation they do their work in uh, degradation of fatty acids the enzymes which are involved in degradation of uh, uh, glucose in krebs cycle they do their work it uh, it's not like uh, the enzymes of krebs cycle involved in the pathway of beta oxidation it's totally unacceptable and it, it's not possible only so that means this way enzymes are very very specific so types of specificity each enzyme are specific in nature okay so based on this specificity there are three categories one is substrate specificity other is reaction specificity and third one is stereo specificity substrate specificity means particular enzyme is very specific towards their substrate like example glucokinase so glucokinase means when glucose has to be phosphorylated this enzyme will come into the action glucose converted to glucose 6 phosphate but hexokinase it is not substrate specific okay there are n number of examples for hexoses like glucose fructose galactose mannose okay all are hexoses so hexokinase will work on the substances which are 6 carbon okay so it will phosphorylate uh, irrespective of the glucose okay reaction specificity there are enzymes which are not specific towards the substrate but they are specific towards the reaction like dehydrogenases reactions you can take out and stereo specificity like uh, stereo isomers you might be know l forms d forms okay so the enzymes which are working on only l form of uh, carbohydrate okay and l form of amino acids so the enzymes which are work only on d form of carbohydrates or d form of amino acids so that is coming under stereo specificity so we'll discuss one by one so first to discuss about substrate specificity again substrate specificity categorized into three types one is absolute specific there is no question about it there is no compromise in specificity of substrate towards the enzyme okay and relative substrate specificity so it is some leniency is there okay if any specific substrate is not coming if it's nearby matching substrate is coming that enzyme will work and broad substrate for uh, like unique reactions this broad substrate specificity is allowed so we'll discuss first absolute substrate specificity certain enzymes will act on only one substrate and catalyze one reaction so glucokinase lactase urease are the examples so as i mentioned so glucose converted to glucose 6 phosphate so the enzyme here is glucokinase so this is a first reaction of glycolysis so you might have mentioned over there hexokinase but this is not substrate specific okay hexokinase is not substrate absolutely substrate specific why because it not only had uh, phosphorylates the glucose it phosphorylates the fructose it phosphorylates the galactose it phosphorylates the mannose so any carbohydrate that is 6 carbon 
okay this hexokinase can phosphorylate so that's why it is not specific to one substrate okay multiple substrates it is specific okay so in case of lactose also same lactose converted to glucose and galactose okay so this lactase is uh, working only on lactose which it will not work on maltose or it will not work on sucrose urease will work on urea only you see here glucose to glucose 6 phosphate glucokinase and lactose to glucose plus galactose by lactase and urea working on urea uh, urea is working on urea to form ammonia and carbon dioxide so another one substrate specificity the thing is relative substrate specificity okay we have discussed absolute substrate specificity now it is relative substrate specificity enzymes acts on more than one substrate that means there is no specificity towards the substrate but mm, the substrate which is closely related that means enzyme can act more than on one substrate so again it is of two types group specificity on bond specificity so group specificity and bond specificity you can make out i can give example beautiful example like digestive enzymes okay so when you consume non western like a protein rich food that protein has to be broken down there are n number of proteins collagen elastase and uh, what to say other proteins okay so to digest these proteins the digestive enzymes are required okay so they don't see the uh, substrate okay so there is a combination so the digestive enzymes work on protein okay so all together and chymotrypsin acts on several proteins by hydrolyzing peptide bonds okay uh, attached to aromatic amino acids okay and trypsin hydrolyzes peptide linkages involving in arginine and lysine and alpha amylases cleaves glycosidic bonds of carbohydrates and lipase hydrolyzes ester bonds of lipids so there are carbohydrates you have different monosaccharide disaccharide and polysaccharides and proteins also you have proteins uh, polypeptides and amino acids and lipids also triacylglycerol monoacylglycerol diacylglycerol so they don't see the specific substrate okay they see the group specificity whether they belong to particular group like uh, whether they are carbohydrate is a lipid or protein so by seeing this group they start acting so chymotrypsin trypsin they they see whether it is a protein or not and amylase it see whether it is a carbohydrate or not okay and lipase it see whether it is a lipid or not and broad uh, substrate uh, to say bond specificity like alpha amylase is work only on glycosidic linkage and esterases will work only on ester linkages and chymotrypsin and trypsinogen they work only on peptide linkages so this is called bond specificity so broad substrate specificity so enzymes acts on more than one structural related substrate okay so hexokinase so that what we are talking about like hexokinase can not only phosphorylates glucose okay it can phosphorylates fructose it can phosphorylates galactose it can phosphorylate mannose so the product might be glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate galactose 6 phosphate or mannose 6 phosphate so it is having broad specificity okay the best example you can give a uh, broad uh, specificity of an enzyme hexokinase so that means glucose fructose galactose and mannose both are hexoses they are all carry six carbons in their structure now coming to another thing like uh, uh, like enzymes acts on more than one structural related like hexokinase as we have discussed it so coming to reaction specificity so the uh, second category of uh, specificity reaction okay enzyme is specific to particular reaction but not to substrate so that what in the heading to say and catalyzes only one type of reaction so example you can see here reaction specificity so acetyl coa converted to pyruvate okay and pyruvate can be converted to lactate so the here the enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase uh, okay so though the reactions are like dehydrogenation okay pyruvate dehydrogenase will work only on pyruvate okay and lactate dehydrogenase work on pyruvate okay but the product is different okay from acetyl coa you want to make pyruvate that means you are supposed to add hydrogens to acetyl coa then it will be converted to pyruvate okay and pyruvate to lactate you are supposed to what to say again you are supposed to add hydrogens here okay so there lactate dehydrogenase that means they are reaction specific not substrate specific these are the group of enzymes which are specific to reaction but not to the substrate it doesn't matter whether the substrate acetyl coa or like uh, pyruvate okay they see whether the reaction belongs to dehydrogenation or not and stereo specificity as i mentioned 
L lactate dehydrogenase will act only on L lactic acid but not D lactic acid. Okay, so stereoisomers D and L forms. L amino acids are biologically active in nature. Okay, that we do require L forms of amino, not D amino acids. Okay, so we do have enzymes which work on uh, this uh, the uh, on our enzyme on digestive system is like L amino acids. Okay, and oxidases. D amino acid oxidase acts only on D amino acids. Salivary alpha amylase acts on the alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage and is inactive on beta 1 4 glycosidic bond. Like salivary alpha amylase is like our starch is made up of alpha D glucose. Okay, alpha D glucose, but not beta D glucose. Okay, beta D glucose present in cellulose. So, this cellulose present in plant cell wall, grass. So, if we eat grass, we cannot digest because it is made up of cellulose and by beta 1 4 glucose, beta 1 4 glycosidic bond in the beta D glucose. So that's all about specificity of enzymes. Thanks for listening. Thank you.